Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your spirit that is present with us. And thank you because you're willing to make your will and your mind and your truth and the knowledge of the word. You're willing to make everything available to us. We're praying, O oh Lord, that tonight you open our spirit and make us understand your word in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that as we study these things and know the events that are coming in the future, that you will preserve us and protect us. Make, up, make us one of your people that will be rapturable in Jesus' name. So that when the Lord shall come and the dead in Christ shall rise and those who are alive will be caught up and rise up with them, will be counted among the number of the righteous, holy, saintly people that will go with the Lord in Jesus' name. That that day of the rapture will not miss the privilege of the saints of God in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that when the wrath of God and the indignation of God and the judgment of God will be happening on the face of the earth in the time of the great tribulation, we will not be in this world at that time in Jesus' name. Make us victorious Christians, triumphant Christians, so that when you will come, we'll be found ready, waiting for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight. Tonight we return to the study of the latter things. That is the study of the things that will take place in the last days. And these you will find in the book of Revelation. We started studying the book of Revelation some months ago. And then we had some break. And we've studied actually about half of the book. We've gone through chapter 1 all through chapter 11. And then we have 11 chapters remaining. And we come to chapter 12 today. We're looking at chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 1. We're looking at Revelation chapter 12 reading from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And then we're told in verse 4, it says, And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to, de to devour her child as soon as it was born. In verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And a child was caught up unto God and unto, this, unto his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place to prepare of God, that sh they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And, where, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And a great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan would deceive the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is salvation come, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time 
And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We find in the passage you have written, you have read quite a lot of personalities. As you come to chapter 11, which is the chapter before this one that we're studying, you will see that the sounding of the seventh trumpet has taken place. And that is the thing that will bring the consummation of this age. Look at chapter 11 and look at verse 15. Chapter 11 and verse 15. See the announcement here. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The king kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever that verse is actually looking to the end of all things to the culmination the climax the consummation of all things and it says the time is coming and it is like the time has arrived already when the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ which means then the consummation of this age will eventually take place it is then that the kingdoms of the world all the kingdoms all together will become the kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ and then after that chapter 11 it's like uh, the passage is backing up to give us both the historic and the prophetic preview that is some things that happened in the past and some things that are going to happen in the future bringing everything together so that the people of God will be able to have a clear understanding of of actually what is going to take place so that we can prepare to fully understand everything that is going to happen from that time on to the very end of the great tribulation i need to tell you because we have not studied this for some months and some weeks now that actually the great tribulation had started in chapter 6 all through from chapter 6 all to chapter 11 the great tribulation had been taking place as we come to chapter 12 the great tribulation is still on at Surely, the great tribulation is right now in the middle. As you come to chapter 12, let me just back up and go to chapter 6. In chapter 6, verse 17, it says, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Actually, you understand then in that chapter 6, verse 17, the great tribulation was already there. And as you come to chapter 7, and you find the multitude of the martyrs, the people that have been beheaded for their testimony and then John the beloved was wondering who are these and one of the elders asked him who do you know that are here now up in heaven because they have been beheaded for their faith then John said of course I don't know only you will be able to tell me and then he tells us in chapter 7 verse 14 and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the lamb so then you understand the great tribulation that started in chapter 6 continued in chapter 7 as you come to chapter 9 the great tribulation was still on chapter 9 verse 3 and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth had power and it commanded and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth Earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it striketh a man. And then in verse 6, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and then shall flee away from them. So you understand. 
at the time of the great tribulation, all the trouble and all the indignation and the wrath of God coming upon the people of the earth at that time. And instead of repenting, they will still be blaspheming the name of the Lord because we read at the end of that chapter 9 in verse 20 and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship the devils on the idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders and of their sorceries nor of the fornication nor of their thefts. that means that actually the great tribulation continued and as you come to this chapter 12 they're still in the midst of the great tribulation in this chapter 12 you'll find some personalities and some characters personages that are mentioned but they are mentioned in symbolic form i need to remind you that the book of revelation is full of symbols actually as you read in chapter 1 of revelation verse 3 revelation chapter 1 you will see that actually it's a symbolic book revelation chapter 1 looking at verse 3 it tells us here it says blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of the prophecy and those that uh, uh, keep those things which are reaching for the time is at hand it's telling us the time is very near the time that the lord will do what he has said he will do and then all these things were reaching sometimes in direct language when you talk about for example chapters two and three that's direct language i know your works i know your faith i know your patience i know your service you're falling from your first love come back and repent and do the first works again that's direct declaration but the rest of the books actually you'll find are very very symbolic that's why the bible uses or revelation chapter 1 verse 1 uses the word signified that is it's a sign it's a symbol it's a signification chapter 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john he sent and he signified it which means you'll find a lot of symbols and if you don't understand the symbols you are going to have a lot of difficulty understanding the book of revelation come back to chapter 12 of revelation i've read everything to you and you'll find that there are five characters there are five there, there are five uh, personages or personalities that are mentioned here number one the woman closed with the son who is that we'll talk about that later but look at chapter 12 and verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman closed with the sun and the moon under her feet and the, the moon under her feet and her head had yet she had a crown with 12 stars that's the first personality that's the first character that we meet number two there is the male child that is the man child that's in verse five and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and a child was caught up unto god and to his throne and then you have another personality number three the great red dragon you find that in verse in verse three as you come to this uh, verse 3, look at it. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, the great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Number four, you find Michael, the angel, the archangel. You find that in verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Number five, you find the remnant of the sea of the woman that you find in verse 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ these are the 12 personalities or characters you find in Revelation chapter 12 we're just going to look at the three pers at three of the personalities today before we get into those personalities can I just remind you and tell you that these events we are reading here 
they, they describe and they cover both history and prophecy. That is, it looks back to history in the past and it looks forward to prophecy in the future. It's relating to us what has already happened. And you'll find as we study that you find some information here, some revelation here, some instruction here, some declaration in chapter 12 of Revelation of things that had happened already. And then you are going to find there are still some things that are reserved for the future. And they're going to happen at the time of the great tribulation, revealing what is yet to happen. The record of Revelation here goes back to the time of Satan's fall, even before the creation of the world. And briefly summarizes important events since the creation of the world, and then immediately jumps into the future, looking far into the future to view what is yet to be accomplished at the consummation of all things. And there are gaps and intervals. As you read all these uh, statements, you'll find there are some gaps and there are some intervals. Those gaps and those intervals are deliberate. Let me just show you an example of what I mean by the gaps and the intervals. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 5, it says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nation, all nations with a rod of iron. You shouldn't have any difficulty understanding who that is. That's the Lord Jesus Christ upon my holy mount of Zion if I set him as a king. This day have I begotten you. He said thou art my son and that's of me and then I will give you the nations. So you will rule them with a rod of iron. This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ but you see here it talks of the birth of Jesus Christ. The the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, she brought forth a man child. He is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God. There's an interval there of about three, three and a half years because you'll find the birth of Jesus and then the death that is skipped over and the resurrection that is skipped over and the 40 days of appearing to his own disciples that skipped over and then when Jesus ascended to heaven he was caught up unto to God and then his throne it says unto his throne you'll find then as you read all these verses and you clearly and carefully analyze them and study them you'll find the events that are there and you'll find the intervals and the gaps that are there which will be brought out very clearly in the study but as we see those intervals they are left out because they just want to go to the very main important indispensable things that will make us understand what is coming on in the future and as we look at this uh, you see the study today is right there on your outline the great wonders of the woman and the child and the dragon verses 1 all through to verse 6 let me read that again just the portion we're studying today revelation chapter 12 reading from verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman with a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being a child cried traveling in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and a child was caught up to unto God and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God and that they should feed her there is thousand two hundred and three score days. That is a passage we have today, and it talks about wonders. In verse one, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and then in verse three, there appeared another wonder in heaven. And so we're looking at these wonders of the woman. That is the woman here with the radiancy and the glory of the sun. And then having the moon on her feet and having a crown of 12 stars upon her head. And then we have the child, the man child. The one that is to rule all the world with the rod of iron. And then the dragon. 
I mean the color that is red, which shows that when you see that dragon and you see the red color, you see danger. And then you see the dangerous things that he's going to do upon the earth. In fact, to show that that red meant danger, when he came into the world and is cast down into the world, the angels rejoice because he's cast out of heaven. And then they announce in verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. That means then that dragon is identified with the old serpent, the devil, the one Satan that deceives the whole world. We divide the message into three parts. Number one, the pain and the travail of the sun-closed woman. The pain and the travail of the sun-closed woman. Number two, the plot and the treason of the dragon. The plot and the treason of the dragon. And then number three, the power and the triumph of the man-child. That is the power and the triumph of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he will reign as king of kings and lord of lords. And then Satan and all the angels, all the fallen angels will not be able to resist the power of the lamb. And the power of the son of God. The power of that man-child, son of God, king of kings and lord of lords. He has power and eventually will try over every other power and then he'll be the Lord of all on earth and in heaven forever and ever let's come back to number one the pain and the travail of the son closed woman what we need to do here is to identify who is this woman who does this woman actually represent? Let's read those two verses again in chapter 12 verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a great wonder in heaven. You need to stop for a moment. How oh, you see it? A great wonder in heaven. You need to remember. I'm pointing out these things to you because you have not been in the revelation for some time. If you turn back to chapter 4, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was a sitwa of a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you, I will show these things which must be hereafter. At the time, at the end of the message to the churches, that is, at the end of the at the end of the period of the church age, the church is called up to heaven, and John represents the church here. And then the Lord said, "Yeah, he, he, he heard the voice when the heaven was open. He said, "Come up here, and when you come up here, I am going to show you things which must be hereafter." So John now, in the revelation, is in heaven, and what he saw, it was in heaven because he was there in heaven all the wonders he saw all the prodigies he saw all the activities he saw all the scenery everything taking place played out like a film before him he was wondering because it was in heaven he saw all those things in chapter 12 verse 1 and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars now you begin to understand it says there is a sun involved here and then she had, she had the glory of the sun because clothing her, enveloping her was the brightness and the radiance and the glory of the sun. And then the moon was under her feet. And then upon her head, you find a crown of 12 stars. You immediately remember the dream of Joseph. And that is talking about the family of Jacob. And it is Jacob that was named, renamed Israel. And so you are talking about Israel here. Israel, is this a woman with the glory of the sun? And with the moon under her feet, and with the twelve, with the twelve starred uh, crown upon the head, and then it says in verse two, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth. Here is a picture of Israel. How do we say this is Israel in the Bible in the Old Testament? Israel is referred to as a woman. Not only that, as a married woman. Not only that, as a married woman travailing with child. As you go back to the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. And you're talking about Israel here. Reading from verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. 
The Lord of hosts is his name, and I redeem and the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, says thy God. Then he says, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. It's talking about Israel. Israel here is referred to as a woman married unto God. Turn to Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62, reading from verse 3. Isaiah 62, reading from verse 3. Thou, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. It's referring to Israel. And here he's giving, he's giving a promise to Israel. And he's saying, in the days to come, in the last days, although you have gone through some real troublous times, the times of Jacob's trouble and the time of tribulation, the general tribulation as well as the great tribulation, but your latter end will be glorious. That's exactly what you're looking at in Revelation chapter 12. As you see that woman with the glory and the radiancy of the sun around her and with the moon under her feet or the crown of 12 stars on the head. And then it says in verse 4, thou shalt no more be turned forsaken neither shall the land any more be termed desolate but thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah for the Lord delighteth in thee and thy land shall be married for as a young man marries a virgin so shall, the, shall thy sons marry thee and then it says, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride show, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. You, you see then, he's talking about the people of Israel. And he said, the Lord is going to rejoice over you. And when the Lord rejoices over you, it will be the joy of the husband over the wife. And then he tells us, uh, uh, let, let's remind ourselves of this that we refer to in Genesis chapter 37. Genesis th chapter 37, talking about Joseph and the dream that he had. And the father rightly understood it was pointing to the family of Jacob, the family of Israel, the children of Israel. In Genesis chapter 37, reading from verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold the sun and the moon and eleven stars made obeisance to me. Because he was the one receiving the dream, there were eleven stars. And he himself was a twelve star. That means eleven plus one, making twelve. Therefore you have the sun, you have the moon, and you have the twelve stars. And then it says in verse 10, in verse 10, and he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that thou hast dreamt? Shall I Jacob, Israel, and thy mother, and thy brethren. That means uh, Jacob, Israel, you mean I'm the son? And then you mean your mother is the moon? And then you have all your brethren, the stars? What is this kind of dream? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed that saying. That, that means then that uh, you see as uh, this revelation is given to us in chapter 12 is written in symbolic form and because the symbols the key to the interpretation of and the identification of those symbols you find in the bible and you find in different passages all together and uh, that means then this uh, this uh, vision that is full of great massive mega signs and wonders can easily be understood this uh, woman then is identified as the in this fascinating description as israel they very plainly described and identified in scripture. Israel is called a married woman. We just read that in Isaiah. And she is referred to as a mother bringing forth children. And now there are some people that will interpret chapter 12 of Revelation and they will say that's the church. That's the church. Well, it cannot be the church because once it says it is that woman that is close with the sun that is standing upon the moon that has the 12 stars upon her head. It is that woman that brought forth 
Jesus. The church did not bring forth Jesus. Jesus came before the church. It was the church, it was Christ that brought forth the church by his sacrifice, by his atonement on the death of, of death on the cross of Calvary. But on the other hand, it was Israel that brought out the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church cannot be this woman. The church is never referred to as a woman, but as a virgin, as a bride of Christ, still unmarried until the marriage supper of the Lamb. So then this woman, a mother who travails and brings forth the man child, the Messiah Christ, is referring to the nation of Israel. And uh, you see that the brilliance that she had and the great beauty that she had and the glory and the splendor that she has is actually described in scripture in prophetic language. The time is coming when the glory of the Lord will cover the whole of Israel and the glory of the sun, the bright shining sun, will be the description of actually the honor, the splendor, the glory that Israel will have. As we look at Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, looking at it from verse 1, it says in verse 1, Isaiah chapter 60, Rise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and, the, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. It's a prophecy that was given to the people of Israel. And then the Lord is saying, yes, the glory will come. The splendor will come. The honor will come. The exaltation will come. As still a future time. Look at verse 20. It says, Thy sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. And so then you understand that this is talking about the, the people of Israel. As we come to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, again is talking about the time of the end. And it's going to be a time of glory and a time of joy, a time of celebration for the children of Israel. In Malachi chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1, for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as the calves of the stall, and as the future glory the future honor and the future exaltation of the people of Israel, of Israel as a nation. Please, let's come back to Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, let's look at verse 2. Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. And she being a child, cried, travailing in birth, pained to be delivered. She being with birth, with, with child, cried. That's labor pain. Travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. How do you apply that to Israel? Well, the Old Testament actually looked for the time when it will be like that. When Israel will be travailing, travailing to bring forth in Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, referring to the nation of Israel. And verses 7 and 8. Isaiah 66, verses 7 and 8. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Look at that. That's exactly the same thing I was re as we were reading in the book of Revelation. In verse 8, who has had this, who has had such a thing, who has seen such things, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. And this is referring to Israel. That tells you then what we're reading in the book of Revelation. And we're referring to this woman. Or the sun being her clothed and the moon under her feet, and the stars on her head. This is referring to the people, to the nation of Israel. And actually, in Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah chapter 26, reading verse 17. Isaiah 
chapter 26, verse 17, like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. And that's talking about Israel again. They were saying that even the things we have seen already, without even the great tribulation coming, it's like we have gone through the labor pains already. It's like we have gone through troublous times already. And yet more is still to come. And you know that uh, bringing out that child eventually the man child that shall rule with a rod of iron we know that is the Lord Jesus Christ and tell me wasn't he the nation of Israel that produced the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't he through the people of Israel that the Lord Jesus Christ came it was also in prophecy and it came out in the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ in reality in Micah chapter 5 reading verses 2 to 4 Micah chapter 5 reading from verse 2 but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that shall be ruler in Israel. Out of Israel, out of the nation of Israel, shall he come that shall be ruler. That's the man child right there. Whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will I will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth has brought forth then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord is God he shall abide for now shall he be great until the ends of the earth that is the Lord Jesus Christ when he eventually comes to reign at the consummation of all things he shall be great unto the ends of all the earth that's the identity or the identification of the sun closed woman we're going to the next uh, the, the, the next picture now and the next point that is the plot and the treason of the dragon the plot and the treason of the dragon here comes another personality in the passage we are looking at today that is the great red dragon who is that let the scripture answer for us and give us the meaning the interpretation of who that dragon actually is in revelation chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 3 revelation chapter 12 verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven behold the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and this dragon had a tail and then it says in verse 4 and he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and a dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and that's the great red, red dragon. What's the identity of this dragon? What, who does this dragon represent? Look at verse 9. And the great dragon which was cast out. That old, old serpent. That is the old serpent that appeared in the garden of Eden. And then it says it's called the devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. And it was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. As you look at this passage talking about the dragon, you actually go back to the time before the creation of the world because it tells us something that had happened before the world was ever created. When Lucifer fell, when Lucifer was proud and he said, I will ascend to the throne of God. I will make my throne higher than that of God. And then he was cast out and there were angels that fell with him at that time. That's what we'll find in verse 4. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven. That is of the angels of heaven now you understand because we're in revelation when it says the stars of heaven you know that that is not referring to the literal stars that you look up in the sky and see because already you know that in this symbolic language the stars are just referring to the shine to the shining luminous uh, personalities in heaven before they fell they were shining they were luminous actually if you look at uh, if you look at job chapter 38 on your bible we're coming back to revelation you look at job chapter 38 and you look at it from 
we're actually looking at verse 7, but I'm going to go back to verse 4. Yeah, Job chapter 38, verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou canst, if thou hast, hast understanding, who has laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, and who has stretched the line upon it, whereupon are the foundations thereof fasting, who laid the cornerstone thereof. The Lord is thought, was talking to Job, because Job had been accusing God of this and of that, and then God said, Job, get up. And get up your loins and be like a man. I'm going to demand some things from you. If you understand, if you want to refer to yourself as an ancient man, an old man, and you can confront the ancient of days, let me ask you some questions. Were you there when I created the world? Were you there when I laid the foundations? Were you there when I put everything there and I set the limits for the water and for everything? And then he said, when the morning stars sank together. That is the angels of heaven. At the time of the creation of the earth, when those angels, when they saw the creation of God, and they sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. You understand then, as we're referring to the stars, we're referring to the angels of God. Angels in heaven. You come back to Revelation chapter 12. And we're told that this dragon, before the beginning of the world, before the creation of the world, here is what he did. He, he brought deception and sin and iniquity, transgression into the minds of some of these angels and those angels. Because when it was Lucifer, the archangel, he was over them. He was supervising them. He was in charge of them and was able to deceive them. And he drew a, a third part of the angels of God. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth. Then they came to the earth, they were thrown down. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was to be delivered. That, that means, you know, that's already talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And the dragon, that is the devil, stood against the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do I need to tell you, you no know Bible history already? When Jesus Christ was born, how Satan instigated Herod, that he will kill all the children, looking for the man child to kill. That's what he's talking about. And you will see a gap there from the time before the creation of the world when the sun, when the angels of God, when one third of them, when they fell with the devil. And then all through the period of the Old Testament, everything is now omitted. And you come to the birth of the Son of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the devil, Satan, the devil, the, the, the serpent, and then the old, the old dragon stood before the woman, ready to deliver the child, wanting to devour, wanting to destroy, wanting to kill that child that was to be born. And that's talking about uh, the devil. Then you look at verse 3, there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, having ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Let, let's look at this uh, more closely and let us understand that this is the evil one, the dragon. In chapter 16, chapter 16 of Revelation, reading from verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Do you see here the dragon having evil spirit? unclean spirit and the unclean spirit are under his control it says i saw those unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet the dragon the beast and a false prophet three of them and then you have one unclean spirit one unclean spirit one unclean spirit making three of them and then he tells us in verse 14 for thee for they are the spirits of devils walking miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. That is, the devil had been fighting ever since and is still fighting the, the plan of God and the purpose of God here on earth. Well, this dragon, you understand here, it says the evil spirit came out of the mouth of the dragon. That means the dragon is the evil one, is the wicked one, is the adversary, is Satan, is the devil. See the identification once again and uh, once more in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 2. Revelation chapter 20 
keep verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. There is no doubt in your mind now. You see from scripture the identity or identification of the dragon is called Satan. Is called the devil. Is called the old serpent. As you call him the old serpent, uh, here is uh, look at Isaiah. But way back in Isaiah, this uh, serpent is identified as the dragon in Isaiah chapter twenty-seven, reading from verse one. Isaiah chapter twenty-seven, reading from verse one. In that day, the Lord with his with his saw and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan vietan the crooked serpent and he shall slay the dragon in the that is that is in the sea you see the dragon is a serpent is leviathan and so you understand then that this uh, dragon we're talking about is the one that is uh, going to rule uh, through the antichrist at the time of the great tribulation let's now go to some descriptions and some activities of this dragon we have identified this uh, dragon now as satan as the devil and as the old serpent and is spoken of as the enemy of God. The account here that we are reading about takes us back to the time of Satan's fall when he led a mutiny against God in heaven and he drew his, his third part of the angels after him in rebellion against God. That initial rebellion of Satan when he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven is what we have recorded here. It happened before the creation of the world and after the creation of the world and after the creation of man, the devil has continued his rebellion and mutiny against God from the Garden of Eden to every place on earth where he influences men and women and people everywhere to rebel against God. Look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads ten horns and his horns on his ten horns ten crowns and upon his says the name of blasphemy that he is blaspheming God. And this is the time of the great tribulation. And this is the time when the devil will come. He'll blaspheme the name of God. You've heard about the Antichrist, I suppose. And you know that the Antichrist will be indwelt by the devil, indwelt by Satan. And he will want to exalt his throne above the throne of God. And he will speak against the Lord Almighty. That's a very terrible thing that is going to happen at the time of the great tribulation. He'll be opposing God. He'll be exalting himself above the almighty God. He'll be wanting to take over as if Christ should not come and Christ should not rule over the earth. He will want to usurp the authority. He has had some time usurping the authority of the Lord and he wants to do it forever without allow he doesn't want to allow Jesus Christ to come back and take the rule and rule over all the nations in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away falls and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition that son of that son of perdition will be revealed who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That's what the devil would like to do. He'd like to sit upon the throne of the universe if he could and sit upon the throne on earth if he could, declaring that there's no other God anywhere. He is that God. And he'll be speaking blasphemous words against the Lord. Now as you look at the revelation at the declaration of Daniel in the prophecy of Daniel, you will see that this was not coming as a surprise to the students of the Bible. From Daniel we already know that that man will come, the son of perdition that will be speaking against the Lord Almighty. Daniel chapter 7 looking at verse 7 and after this I saw in the night visions and behold the fourth beast dreadful and terrible strong exceedingly and it had 
a great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamp the residue of the uh, with the feet of with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. You see, this is referring to the power and the strength and the energy of that evil one. The horns, if you have noticed, what uh, animals do with their horns? That's uh, with they were the horns they defend themselves. It is a show, the demonstration of their strength and so when you talk about the seven the seven crowns on the head of this dragon and then you talk about the horns uh, that he has that symbolizes power and might and energy and strength and then he tells us in that daniel chapter 7 verse 20 daniel chapter 7 verse 20 and of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three uh, three well three three fell even of that horn that had eyes, that is intelligence and knowledge, and a mouth that spake great, very great things, whose look was more stout, more terrible than his fellows. And then in verse 24, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and it shall be diverse, different from the first, and shall subdue do you three kings so then you understand that this dragon will arise and the heads and the crowns and and the, the horns are referring to the might and the strength of the kingdom in the last days there'll be the world kingdoms that will be coming together they'll be coming together to fight against the lord and eventually the lord will come he'll fight against them he will overcome them and then the, the, the power of the lord will then rule over all the kingdoms of the earth you see, see the pronouncement in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when God said, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and you'll bruise his heels. It says that time that the devil got information, and he knew that the Lord Jesus Christ will come, the son of the woman, the one that is to be born by a virgin that will bruise the head of the devil. And the devil wanted to prevent that by all means. That is why he has been making efforts to destroy the messianic line and if he saw that anybody will be like that lord jesus christ and that he will destroy him before jesus will have the chance he'll want to destroy he'll want to destroy the lord jesus christ and so you will find when jesus christ was born that's why he walked through herod seeking for the child using deception you wise men go and check up and find out where the where the young where the young child is and come and tell me so that i will go and wash him him but they were they were warned in a dream by the lord saying they should not go back because herod had an evil intention and then they went another way and when they when herod did discovered that what did he do what he did was to kill all the children in the hope that he will kill the lord jesus christ the enmity had been there all the time because he wanted to set himself up as a king as a king of kings and the lord of laws and he didn't want any rival at all he wanted to reign. If you look at Isaiah, you will see the history of this uh, man of perdition and this man of sin, this Satan, this old serpent, this dragon, this devil that wanted to destroy the Messianic line and destroy the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou caught down to the ground with these weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, above the stars of God. God. You understand now? Above the angels of God. Above the shining exalted personalities in heaven. I will exalt my throne. Above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. In the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought now to hell and to the sides of the pit. And you will see here the declaration of God that 
even though he was scheming and planning that he'll set his throne above that of God, he'll be the all in all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, wanting to take place, take the place of the Son of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. The declaration and the prophecy is, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. In Ezekiel chapter uh, 28, we're still giving the history and the prophecy concerning this man of sin, this man of perdition, this uh, evil one, the one that is to be defeated eventually by the breast of the nostrils of the Son of God when he comes back. In Ezekiel chapter 28, reading from verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros and uh, say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, thou, thou sealest up the Son, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in heathen, the garden of God. Every, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius and the topaz and the diamond and the beryl and the onyx and the jasper and the sapphire and the emerald and the carbuncle and the gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy, of thy pies was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art an, the anointed cherub that covereth. I have said thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Till iniquity was found in thee, everything was great, everything was wonderful, everything was perfect. Then he says, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast seen, therefore, I will cast thee down as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. And thine heart, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I will cast thee to the ground I will lay thee before the kings and dead that they may behold thee. So you understand then that this uh, devil this is the one that's talking about he fell from heaven but when he fell he fell with a thought of the stars of heaven. A thought of the angels of heaven. And it is uh, for those angels now hell fire had been prepared and reserved. And that's why Jesus said in chapter 25 of Matthew Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 41. Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall you say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That is, those angels uh, that fell with the devil, a third part of the stars of heaven, eventually they'll be cast into hell. We'll come back, we'll come now to point number three. Thank God the history and the, and the events of the world is not going to end with Satan on top. It's not going to end with the activity of the dragon because there is one that has come and the one that has sacrificed for the sins of humanity. There is the Lamb of God that is going to become the Lion of the tribe of Judah and he will have the last say and he is the one that will conquer. He is the one that will rule with the rod of iron. Please come back to Revelation chapter 12 and in Revelation chapter 12 we're looking at verse 5. Revelation chapter 12 verse 5. We're looking at the power and the triumph of the man child. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and a child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Here we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and already we have discovered and we have found out by interpretation of scripture that the woman bringing forth the child is the nation of Israel. We have read that already in Micah. Let's go back to that Micah. Micah chapter 5. And we want to remind ourselves that the Lord Jesus Christ came from the nation Israel. And it was the nation Israel that had given Jesus Christ, humanly speaking, unto the world. In Micah chapter 5, reading from verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet 
out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth has been from of old from everlasting. It's telling us of the pre-existence of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is Jesus was not created. He had been from everlasting and he will continue to everlasting. He only became man. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of God full of grace and full of truth that's the incarnation of the lord jesus christ but before the conception and before the birth of the lord jesus christ he had existed because here it says he had been from of old from everlasting but then he came to this world so that he'll be he will be able to fight against the plans of the devil and against all the strategy of the devil against all the works of the devil and he will overcome him and then he'll be able to take the wall back from the hand of the devil and it will reign as king forever and ever in some two reading from verse six some two verse six yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee you see here is referring to the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ and here is the father declaring concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and concerning his only begotten son I have set thee upon my holy mount of Zion and you are my king I will declare the decree you are my son this day have I begotten thee in verse 8 ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession thou shalt break them with a rod of iron thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel that's talking about the coronation of the lord jesus christ when christ will come and it will reign forever and ever all these uh, the prophets have been looking forward to to the time it will come when christ will come number one to be born and then to live his life and to walk all those miracles and then to die on the cross of calvary for our sins and to redeem us to the lord and eventually to come back and reign over the whole earth in isaiah chapter 9 isaiah chapter 9 looking at verse 6 and verse 7 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace of the increase of his kingdom and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon the uh, his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this it's talking about jesus christ who will come and then he will reign as you read this prophecy in, as in a revelation chapter 12 and then you see in that verse 5 she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and a child was caught up unto god and to his throne as i told you before you'll see the gaps right there the man child who is to rule all nations is christ great periods of time separate the details mentioned here concerning christ in this verse number one his ministry on earth his life on earth is not referred to we're just told he brought forth a child and is to rule the earth and that child was cut off, omitting the ministry that he had on earth and his life on earth, omitting his death and atoning sacrifice, and also sleeping over the resurrection. We must always take note of such intervals between revealed prophetic events. The verse quoted above, that is this Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, mentions Christ's incarnation. It mentions the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ cut up. Mentions his exaltation and his coronation. Satan could not stop his incarnation. And he will not be able to stop the coronation and the exaltation of the Lord. Jesus is coming again. And we will reign with him in Jesus' name. Now as you look at this, you will see that kingdom will be forever and ever. In Daniel chapter 2, referring to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, when he will come. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 44, referring to the kingdom of the Lord, and in, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom 
which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to all the people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. All the kingdoms of the earth today, they are temporary. They will get out of the way eventually. And then the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ will be established, and it is that kingdom that will stand and remain and be established forever and ever. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. That's Jesus Christ the son of God coming to God the father and they brought him near unto him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages uh, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away and his kingdom we shall not be destroyed. That's the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ eventually. He will reign. He will reign wherever there is son and that kingdom will be forever and ever. In Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. Reading in verse 10. Still reading about the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ how it will be to the ends of the earth. It will cover everywhere from land and from sea. Everywhere. It tells us Zechariah chapter 9 verse 10. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from river even to the ends of the earth which means then Jesus is going to reign and the angels know about that because at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in his incarnation the angel told Mary in uh, declaring to Mary what was going to happen that this Jesus that will be born of her will have great power will have unlimited power and will have irresistible power and will eventually reign upon the throne of David in Luke chapter 1 verse 32 and verse 33 Luke chapter 1 verse 32 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give him, shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And as well as you come to Revelation, and now you are coming to the close of all things, the culmination of all things, the climax of all things, as, as the end was in view. In this revelation, then John began to see that this Jesus Christ is coming back, and then is going to reign, and his kingdom will be forever and ever. And from chapter 11 of Revelation, before you even get to chapter 12, the proclamation, the declaration of the eternal reign of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ was already being referred to. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And by the time you get to chapter 19, when the, uh, the, the end was actually now prophetically in view, here is the declaration in Revelation chapter 19 verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his tie a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Thank God is coming again. I said it's coming again. As we look at this study and we see what the Lord himself is revealing to us, what have we learned? We're learning, one, we've seen identification. Number two, we've seen, we need to see instruction. Number three, we need to see intercession. Number four, we need to see some invitation. Number one, identification. You see already in the study today, there are three personalities revealed. Number one, the woman referring to Israel. Number two, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then number three, you have the dragon. In the case of the woman Israel, you cannot choose to be an Israelite. 
because you are a Gentile. But you can choose to either be on the side of the dragon or you can be on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. As for the dragon, it's reigning temporarily. As for the dragon, it's going all about and it's deceiving people. And as for the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Lamb of God. But eventually, he will be the lion that will reign forever and ever. You have had today, number one, identification. The, the dragon identified, the man child identified, and the woman, the son, clothed woman identified. But number two, there is instruction. When you study something like this, it is not just to give you information. It is not just to give you knowledge. It is to give you an instruction. You have learned already today that there's going to be a dragon. And it's going to be this devil. He will be parading the world. And it's going to work miracles with the evil spirit coming out of his mouth. And the people of the world are not going to know that those miracles are being done by the power of the devil. That's why kings and chiefs and highly placed people, Eli's and rich people, wealthy people, uh, talented people, they're going to run after him because of those miracles. I read it to you. I'm going to read it again because they're so very important important in revelation chapter 16 verses 13 and 14 and i saw three unclean unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouths of the dragon and out of the mouths of the beast and out of the mouths of the false prophet evil spirit coming out of the mouth of the of the false prophet and of the beast representing and walking for the dragon walking for the devil and the evil spirit is the same evil spirit in the dragon is the same kind of evil spirit in the false prophet the spirit operating in the life of false prophets is of the devil and it is of it is of the dragon it says in verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils walking miracles will you understand then brothers and sisters as we look at all these things that everywhere you see miracle it doesn't mean that christ is operating there it doesn't mean that the pure word of god is operating there because there are spirits of devils walking miracles that's why the lord jesus gives us instruction as the coming of the lord jesus is drawing near and you'll see the wind blowing because the antichrist is going to cast a shadow ahead of him before he comes you'll see his shadow that's why it says that evil sin the man of perdition the principle of sin is even walking right now only he that let it will let until he be taken out of the way the people of the world need to know that the spirit of the antichrist is already at work and the evil spirit of the dragon is already at work the evil spirit of the beast and the false prophet they are already at work that's why the lord is giving us instruction in matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 24 for there shall arise false christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect behold i have told you before wherefore this instruction if they say unto you behold he is in the desert they say christ is there miracles are happening again and christ is walking there they will say he's in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chamber believe it not that's the instruction the lord has given us and then he gives us an instruction for intercession number one identification number two instruction number three intercession knowing that these things are soon going to be fulfilled and knowing that christ is about to come knowing that we're seeing the activities of the antichrist and the activities of the dragon casting their shadows before the time the real time what should we be praying about now what intercession should be which we be making at this very time in luke chapter 21 luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 it says over here take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that they come upon you unawares the lord is telling us that uh, the time is coming and you need to prepare yourself the great tribulation will soon come because the rapture can take place any time from now any time from now and it says you take it so that the cares of this life what shall we eat what shall we drink i want more education i want a more property i want 
want more houses. I want this for myself. I want that for myself. And the other one for myself. Take it to yourself. Lest your heart be overcharged, overloaded, or so fitting over the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Here is what we are to do intercession. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these sins that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. When the Son of Man shall come, when the Lord himself will come and then he will have the rod of iron with him and he will rule over the whole earth take heed and pray and watch that you will stand in righteousness and holiness because blessed are the pure in heart only they shall see the Lord follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord we know that the Lord is coming and everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure and you are praying and you are waiting upon the Lord so that that day will not come upon you unawares that's why the Lord is giving us invitation is telling you to make a choice in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, reading from verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Already we have studied today that there is the dragon and then there is the man child. There is Satan on one hand. There is a savior on the other hand. There is a usurper on one hand. There is a false deceiver. With, uh, the, the one that is uh, making walking miracles to deceive people. On the one hand there is a real son of God. The one that the father has given authority over all flesh that will reign forever and ever. On the other hand. And you need to make your choice that's why you have the invitation today if you have not been born again if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ a day is coming when you will not be able to do that a day is coming when the God of this world Satan the dragon will bifold everybody when the pain of the great tribulation will be so much that you will not be able to have any decision any one of your mind to be able to make your decision and serve the Lord but this is the day of opportunity the Lord is calling you and is telling you choose you this day whom you will serve and I come to Exodus chapter 32 Exodus chapter 32 and I'm looking at verse 26 then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is on the Lord's side here is the dragon on the one hand here is Jesus Christ the son of God and the deliverer the savior the king of kings and the lord of laws on the other hand and the lord is asking you through Moses through the man of God who is on the Lord's side let him come unto me make your choice today make up your mind today that when that day shall come and then the son of perdition shall be revealed and the church would have been taken away before that time that you would have been on the Lord's side saved sanctified spirit filled steadfast in the lord and serving the lord and then they, they already have been with the lord when all those great tribulation evil things are taking place on the earth here you'll be with the lord i said you will be with the lord but if that is going to be the case this is the time you make up your mind this is the time you make your choice i'm now ending up with revelation chapter chapter 12 verse 6 revelation chapter 12 reading in verse 6 it says there and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of god that's talking of the woman that's talking of israel that at the time of the great tribulation when the church had been taken away israel was still be here because at this time now blindness has come upon the nation of Israel and they are not giving their lives to the Lord and after the church would have gone then the Lord will be dealing with the people of Israel they will flee into the wilderness and then there will be a place prepared for them and there they will be fed a thousand two hundred and three score days if you divide that by 30 you divide one two six oh one thousand two hundred and sixty by 30 you are going to have 42 that means 42 months if you divide divide 42 by 12 you're going to have three and a half three and a half years that means three and a half years of tribulation had passed before this chapter 12 and these are days chapter 12 three and a half years still remain for the people of the world and Israel to go through the great tribulation but thank God we will not be around then 
I said we'll not be around then. And if you're going to be ready for the rapture, here is a day of preparation. Here is the day to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to be here at the time when the dragon will be punishing people, will be oppressing people, will be and the scorpion will be biting people, stinging people. I don't want to be here. When the dead in Christ shall rise, and then we which are alive shall be caught up together with them, I want to be among the number. I said I want to be among the number. You rise up and tell the Lord, I want to be among the number of the people that will be raptured, of the people that will escape the great tribulation. I'm not going to be here at that time. I'm not going to be here at that time. Already you have the invitation of the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. Where are you? Where do you stand? Are you supporting the devil? Are you supporting the dragon? Or do you have the spirit of rebellion and the spirit of unrighteousness and the spirit of, of blasphemy? Are you fighting against God like the dragon? Come on the Lord's side. Come on the Lord's side. The Lord is calling you today. Choose whom you will serve. Choose whom you are going to serve. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Those angels are fell with the devil. They will spend eternity in hell with the devil. They sought part of the stars of heaven that were cast down. And they fell with the devil. They will spend eternity with the devil in hellfire. And all men, all women, all human beings in every generation that fall with the devil, that follow the devil, that serve the devil, that sin by the, because the devil is instigating, influencing, controlling them, they will, they will spend eternity in hellfire with the devil. Where will you spend eternity? The Lord is giving you invitation today. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. If you don't repent today, your repentance may become too late. There may not be the chance to repent later. Repent of your rebellion and repent of unrighteousness and repent of sin and repent of evil and repent of the influence and the control of the dragon of the serpent of the deceiver and stop running out of false miracle, false miracle, miracle from false prophet, miracles from the false eye from the antichrist and miracles from the dragon. It is by the spirit of the evil spirit that is how they are walking those miracles where Christ is not exalted, where there is no salvation and where there is no sanctification where there is no holiness of life any miracle happening there is coming of the devil run away from it and run to the side of the lord come to the side of the lord come to the side of the lord the lord is calling you come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest the lord is calling you the lord is calling you come now let us reason together this is your chance this is your opportunity you can be saved today you can be saved today Come out of among them. Come out from the side of the dragon. Come out of the people that are following after the devil. And come out of your sin. Come out of your sin. If you confess your sin, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He can forgive you today. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. He's your savior today. If you decide to let he may become your judge. It may become your judge now that is acting and operating and ministering as a lamb of god as the one that takes your sins away come to the lord today come to the lord today let him forgive you let him change your life let him give you salvation let him write your name in the book of life and then when the lord shall come if you live a victorious life if you're an overcomer overcoming temptation overcoming sin overcoming evil then you'll be with the lord you'll go with the lord but if you don't decide today, if your heart is of a child with suffering and drunkenness and with the cares of this life, and you will not give yourself to the Lord, you've had a call over and over and over again, and you remain in sin, where will you spend eternity? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. This is the acceptable time. This is the day of salvation. You can be saved today. You can be saved today. Your sins can be forgiven today. You can get ready for heaven today. The Lord is calling you. Come. The spirit and the bride say come. Let him that heareth say come. And he that is a thirst, let him come. And take the water of life freely. Salvation is free. 
Salvation is free. It will touch your heart. It will turn your hand. It will transform your life. It will forgive you. He will make you a new creature. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let things become new in your life today. It will forgive you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It will take your sins away. He will forgive you. He will erase every memory of your past sin. And he will cleanse your heart completely. Make you a new creature. Make you a new person. And then you'll be a child of God. You'll be a member of the family of God. All the backsliding, everything will be forgotten. Prodigal son, come back home. Prodigal daughter, come back home. And say, Lord, I choose Christ today. I run away from the dragon. I run away from the old serpent. I run away from the deceiver. I run away from the deceiving miracles. Deceptive miracles leading people astray. I run away from them. I want to be with the Lord. I want to be with the Lord. I want to be a child of God. Pray until the Spirit of God will be a witness with your heart that you are now a child of God. Pray until the testimony of the Spirit is very clear that your sins are taken away. That your life is changed. That your life is turned around. He will do it. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. He will forgive you. He will change your life. He will turn you around. He will make you a new creature. And then when Christ shall come. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive believers that are alive. They will be caught away and caught to heaven. You will be among the number. Make sure that you are born again. Make sure that you have the victory. You have the holiness and sanctification before you leave. And then for the rest of your life, depend upon the grace of God. So that every time, every time, every time, you'll be on the side of the Lord. On the side of the Lord, you'll live with him and live for him. And even suffer for him. And we'll suffer with him, we shall reign with him. Please.